What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for a Tottenham update. The international break is up and running, rocking and rolling. So we got some updates from the international break. But let's start off talking about Eric Dyer's. Matt Law gave us an update a few days ago saying that Eric Dyer has now held talks with chairman Daniel Levy after being frozen out by the new head coach, Ange Postacoglu. The details of the meeting have been kept private, but it's likely that Dyer wanted answers over his status in the squad and talks over what the future might hold. I mean, mm. surely these talks should have been happening like during the transfer window. <laughs> you would have thought so. But surely he must know. He doesn't need a, a uh, meeting with Levy, surely, to know that he hasn't been included in any of the squad. He um, Postacol got a good look at him in pre-season because he played a couple of the pre-season games and since a uh, competitive footballer started he hasn't been included I'm sure those conversations must have happened during the window because he was offered to Bournemouth he was offered to Bur um, Burnley made an offer for him like I'm sure this is not new. Apparently, Levy's the one who, as you say, he called Levy's the one who called the meeting. So maybe it's just to make sure that is that he, is that what happened? Did Levy actually call that meeting? Yeah, Levy called the meeting. That's what um, Matt, Matt Law said in the article. So I think but why? Like, what what is the kind of reason for this kind of meeting after the transfer window is finished? Like. Surely it's just clear for everyone to see what's going on over here. I'm guessing it's because he's a um, a long-standing member of the team. Um, so, you know, you have to show him some sort of respect as to like why he's not being selected. And I'm guessing that's what's what the meeting's about, just to make sure that he doesn't get too disgruntled the situation, but maybe get him to understand that he just isn't going to suit what Ange wants. And I'm sure Dyer himself is going to always going to, as a look, when you get, when you're a professional footballer and you get to that level, you're always going to have your own, that self-confidence that you can play in any system and, and, you know, you're good enough basically. And he's not even 30 yet. So he probably doesn't feel like he's past it. So, I f he or maybe he's just thirty, but um, I feel like he probably feels like, look, I'm I'm an option. I'm the most experienced centre back in the squad. I I should be at least be selected as a backup. So maybe it's like Levy saying, look, Ange at the moment just doesn't feel like you're right, and that that's the direction we're going in. And I'm guessing that's the meeting. But I'm, sh it's sh I'm sure he must have had these conversations with Postecoglou about his future. Yeah, you would have thought so. And now you're looking at someone like Ashley Phillips, who's getting in the bench ahead of Eric Dyer, which is crazy to think about. Like a year ago, you would have thought, like, if I would have told you, you know, we're going to sign an 18-year-old that has played eight games in the championship and he's going to be ahead of Eric Dyer in the pecking order. Um, I think it's music to all our ears, essentially. But I think that, I think that, like, surely the only amicable solution to this is to you know let him cancel the contract or, or go our separate ways because what good is it just having him just rotting away not even on the bench yeah but Dyer's not going to accept that when he can't find a new club now because it's, it's uh, unless he goes to Saudi or well, Saudi windows closed so yeah. uh, that, Turkey's the only one that's open so right? unless he goes to Turkey um I d yeah I think that's still open but I think the deadline um is also coming up soon so unless he goes there there's no, for Dyer's point of view there's no use cancelling cancelling his contracts he can't find a new club so he's probably going to rather who'd rather back himself to try and force him his way back into the Spurs team than just be a free agent for six months yeah, from Tottenham's but, point of it view it should have happened before the end of the window of course window. it should have and I don't I don't get uh, same with Lloris that also should have happened before the window we're still in a situation where he's still here so so it's, it's those couple it's a baffling situation but um it's it's not i guess i don't i don't blame spurs so much because i think they probably tried to get them out and especially with the Lloris situation i don't blame tottenham, tottenham at all because they've given him ample time to find a new club but he hasn't been able to do it do so so it's not tottenham's fault that that's the situation but Just rejecting every move that but, comes his way before the window closed for 100 percent, there should have been some sort of resolution in terms of potentially counting the contract now we're here where they're both still here somehow it's yeah. a bit crazy yeah um let's move on and let's talk about scott munn ali gold got brought us yesterday that scott munn will officially commence his job as tottenham's new chief of football officer later this month even though we all know he He's been working no, he hasn't, uh, for the last couple of months. He so. hasn't done a thing. He hasn't been at the stadium. He hasn't uh, been conducting any deals. He hasn't been involved in anything. He uh, hasn't been spotted by Ali Gold at every home game. Literally, it's I don't not understand happened. this. Like, why, why are Spurs playing this game? Like, oh yeah, he's not working. He's not working. Because he's, he's literally been pictured 
<laughs> jet setting around the world with Daniel Levy. He's been pictured inside the stadium. He's even been seen at away games. So, I mean, what 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 game they're trying to play here? Well, well, they have to officially say, don't they? Because I think officially he's not allowed to be working in an official capacity. So they've got to play the game at some point, a risk of like uh, any kind of legal retribution. So at the end of the day, they've got to play the game. They've got to give a public face of he hasn't been working, even though everyone knows that he's clearly started his job already. So um, well, he's going to start apparently later this month. So can't wait for him to get started because it's all going to change. I'm sure it's going to be brand new stuff. Yeah, exactly. Big up, Scott. <laughs> um, let's get into the internationals now. Wells played South Korea last night in a nil-nil uh, game. Davis captained Wales and played 90 minutes whilst... Hyung Min Son captain South Korea and played 90 minutes, but neither could get on the score sheet. Brennan Johnson played the first 45 minutes and Joe Roden also played 90 minutes. There was a lovely picture of the four, um, you know, getting together after the game as well, uh, as you can see there. And there was a quote from Hyung Min Son talking about Brennan Johnson as well. And he says he showed his qualities last year at Nottingham Forest and I cannot wait to see him with my eyes. He is a very good player. Welcome to Spurs. I can't wait to play with him. It, it has been only, it has only been four games and we're looking uh, to keep going in a positive way with Brennan he wants to improve and get to the next step he'll feel the pressure but I can't wait to have him playing even better fast attack even better with fast attacking football I'm, mm. I'm guessing that quote came before the game um, but Look, I think it'll be great to have both of these guys in, in the starting lineup. Great sheer speed in that front line. Yeah, and you can see in that picture, uh, Johnson looks absolutely buzzing, doesn't he? Yeah. To be part of the group and to be with the Spurs boys. Uh, He's a bit starstruck, to be fair. I mean, I got that that um, that feeling when I saw that video, that Spurs poster of him walking around the training and uh, all the facilities and everything like that. He just looked like um, like a little schoolboy uh, yeah. going into like this big, shiny new club. Yeah, he's buzzing, isn't he? He can't wait to get started. And that's the kind of attitude we want. People are desperate to be here and people are hungry to take their, that opportunity. So uh, I'm, look, I'm happy to have him here. He seems delighted. I think, uh, I, think um, I can't remember who tweeted it, but I saw, I think it might be the Wales account, uh, tweeted the picture saying another addition to the Welsh Mafia. And I love how they have Son in there as part of the Welsh Mafia because I remember when Bale was there, uh, Son was always included as part of the Welsh Mafia as well. So that's a funny little thing. But yeah, look, he seems buzzing and um, it looks like he's um, the group are taking him in very quickly. Yeah, and there was actually a, a really funny little clip uh, during the rounds with Son and Davis leaving Spurs training and getting the train uh, to Wales. Uh, I think they were at King's Cross or something, literally mm. just waiting for a train on a platform. Can you imagine just going to King's Cross and seeing those two just waiting <laughs> on a platform to get on a train? It's That'd so be unbelievable. Funny. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's so funny. I love that they travelled together as well. Uh, he was like, look, and they two know they Yeah, two captains and two really close friends. We've got to remember, Davis and Son have pretty much been at Spurs as long as each other because I think yeah. Davis joined one year before Son was did. It so. So I think Davis has been here nine years and I think Son eight years. Wow. So, yeah. Let's talk about the Argentina game from last night. Argentina beat Ecuador 1-0 uh, by another unbelievable Messi free kick. Uh, Romero got himself another man, the match award, playing 90 minutes. And, I mean, one clearance, 66 out of his 68 passes completed, seven out of his eight ground jewels won, Four out of his seven aerial duels won. Zero times dribble past and a clean sheet. Those are the numbers behind Cuti Romero's performance last night. And the plaudits have come in from everywhere uh, for Cuti Romero. Absolutely an unbelievable display. The manager, Lionel Scaloni, uh, says that I have no words for the match Cuti Romero had during the home games. People motivate him and he thinks he's a he's a he-man. <laughs> he can run 70 meters. He is impressive. He's an impressive centre-back and he, plays, he played an incredible game. Lionel Messi says that for me, he is the best defender in the world right now. Amazing performance tonight and man of the match. Rodrigo de Poole says today, Cuti Romero is up to being the best central defender in the world. Having him behind me is the best thing that can happen to me because he always forces me to go forward. He always wants me to be one on one against the opponent. I got used to going out without looking uh, back and he is, and that is the pleasure of for a midfielder because in the end, you look at what that uh, what that you have in front and that always allows you to get less tired. And Enzo Fernandez as well on social media uh, labelled him the best central defender in the world. So, I mean, when you're getting that praise from Leo Messi, yeah. 
I mean, you know it means something. And Messi's always been a massive fan of his. There was, remember, when we signed him, there were a lot of reports saying that Messi wanted him Barcelona. to join Barcelona. And um, they couldn't get the money together, basically, to sign him. So Tottenham were able to steal a march. You've got to remember as well, you know, Argentina in recent history have won the Copa America and they've won the World Cup. But it was all, and I wouldn't say it's all down to Romero, but he's like made a massive difference into that team because before him, they were really strong. Everyone used to say Argentina have an amazing attack, but they couldn't defend. Yeah. They just didn't have the defenders. And ever since Romero's come into the fold for Argentina, they've uh, they've really uh, become a really great defensive team. He's he's made a massive difference. And like he's been, if in that Copa America run, I remember when he won the, when he won the Copa America, he picked up an injury during that run. And and they thought they pretty much like injected him wherever they can to get him fit for that final because they, they were so desperate to be fit. So like Messi must, looking at that, he must attribute a lot of their good fortune of the last couple of tournaments down to Romero and how well he's been and how good he's been, sorry. And uh, I've seen like the individual, I didn't watch the game, but I saw the individual highlights of him yesterday. He seemed um, like at his very best. Like a lot of the, what I really like about um, what I'm seeing from Romero is a lot of the situations he finds himself in is, what I in, um, feel like he's going to find himself at, at Spurs because it was very much, he was one-on-one -on -one with a lot of the attackers, very much individual battles he's battling and he's coming out on top. And those are going to be very crucial, especially from Tottenham's point of view, because we're going to be committing a lot of risk, throwing a lot of players forward. And he's going to be at the back, sometimes isolated and asked to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one defending. And he has to be strong enough and confident enough to do that. And we know that he is, um, he's that confident within himself. So he's playing really well for Spurs at the moment. He's been the, one of the best defenders so far in the league this season. He's He's carrying on his um, good form for Argentina as well. So long may he continue. The only worry is if he starts playing too well, or some of the big boys are going to come in for him in a year or so's time. And, and that might be a reality, but I think he's been unbelievable so far this season. Well, we've got to make sure that we're one of the big boys then. 100%. 100%. Um, and with players like that, I mean, you know, it, it might happen. It mm. might happen. But we've still got a long way to go, that's for sure. Um, but let's. Uh, there was actually one moment I loved watching in those individual highlights. Romero just makes like this amazing challenge on Enna Valencia. And then instead of just like going on and getting on with the game, he just goes straight into Enna Valencia's <laughs> face and starts screaming for some unknown reason. He just likes to rile people up. I <laughs> love it. Hilarious. He just gets in their faces. It's brilliant. It's a bit similar to like uh, that Harry Maguire thing from uh, against Manchester United a few years ago. And also uh, when he just was screaming screaming in Mbappe's face uh, in the World and Cup final I remember he did well. four nows as well. Yeah. I remember he did four because he accused four nows of diving. So don't get on the wrong side of Romero, that's all I'm saying. Let's, I think uh, it's because they even dared to take him on. That's like, don't you dare. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So funny. Uh, but let's move on. Let's talk about Denmark now. They beat San Marino 4-0. Pierre-Emma Hoybier scored the first goal and played 58 minutes in the game. A uh, fairly good goal as well, but I guess you can't really read too much into when you're playing San Marino. Oh, to the be Giants honest. of San Marino. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very hard to play against. No, of course. It was a nice goal. Um, we know Hoybier has that in him to get the odd goal. Uh, in around the penalty box it was like edge of the area really nice finish as well but against San Marino yeah you can't really give him too much credit but nice for him to get on the score sheet yeah he was talking before the game as well when they were asking him about like how he's handling losing his place in the Spurs team and stuff like that and, uh, and interesting quotes and he says I follow the path of the coach and the team and fortunately there has been a good tone throughout and as such, there has been no problem uh, from some of the sides. Fortunately, there is a great understanding that only thing that is important are the tasks that lie ahead for the team and the club. There has been a good dialogue throughout and there has been a great respect from both parties. In the end, the most important thing, and I have made this very clear to the coach and the club, is that I have to show my best side and deserve that I get playing time. Right now, I am not among the starting 11. It is what it is. I try to show my best side if the coach points to me. And that's a great attitude. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what we want to hear because as much as... Don't expect anything less from Hoybier anyway, do you? Yeah, and I think... I don't know if that's an acknowledgement that he's out. he like, deserves to be out of the first team right now, but maybe because his performances aren't as good as who's in front of him. But... I think Hoybier is a good player, but if he's going to get starts at the moment, he needs to show that it's not just about giving 100% and putting in the tackles and all that. He has to show quality on the ball. He has to show quick of passing ability, quality with his passing as well. And if he's, if he's going to work in this system, and those are 
qualities that sometimes have been lacking with him. And if, if he can get up to speed, I'm sure he can earn his place back. But right now, other players are just doing it better. Yeah, I think he's gonna he is gonna have a big part to play this season, um, even if it's a role from the bench. Because like five subs, I think he has done well in short spurts when coming on to help us close out games in the last twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. Um, so that's still a big role to play within the team. But I do imagine um, that there won't be any new contract or anything like that, and he probably goes um, within the next year or so. Probably never say never though. You never know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just before we move on to the last bit of quote, we um, Netherlands played yesterday against Greece 3-0. Uh, Van de Ven got called up for the first time um, in his uh, Netherlands career, but he wasn't even in the squad. It was a very strange one, that. Yeah, I just hope it's not an injury he's picked up, but no one's um, confirmed that. No one said he's not selected because of an injury. So, yeah, considering the big benches you get in international duty as well, it's a bit strange that he wasn't even included on the bench. So... Unless there's confirmation of an injury, I'm, I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to mind too much because it just means less playing time for him and he'll be fit. So two people, two players got called up for their first time ever. Him and that Chelsea player Matson, uh, the, the young kid that's coming through there at the moment, and neither of them were in the squad yesterday. It's very strange. Maybe he had to make a decision about two players and it just had to be them. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, I'm sure he'll be frustrated because he's had a very good start to the season at Spurs. But at the end of the day, maybe it's just maybe he got called up more to be around the first team rather than actually play. I can't speak for the manager, but I don't mind. I, I'm, I'm sure he'll be happy just to have been called up. Maybe he'll get a look in in the second game in yeah. the international get duty. But the less football he plays for me, the better because yeah, I, I just want him fit for Spurs. Yeah, totally. Uh, and then there, oh, we're going to finish off on some quotes from James Madison. And just before we bring you these quotes, um, I just want to give you these stats that he's that that is surrounding him this year. So in the Premier League, he's got the most goal contributions, which is four, the most shots, which is thirteen, the most shots on target, which is nine, and the most chances created, which is ten, the most fouls won, which is eleven, the most crosses put in, which is twenty nine. The most passes into the opposition box, which is 53. The most passes into the final third, which is 90. The most through balls, which is three. The most layoffs, which is five. The highest XG, which is 1.61. And the highest XA, which is 1.81. This must be most for Tottenham. Can't be in the Premier League. It must be most for Tottenham. Yeah, because I, when goal, I read it, I did think it was most in the Premier League. Because goal contributions, Haaland has yeah, six yeah, goals, so it can't be. Yeah, I know. Unless it's for a midfielder. It could be for, maybe it's most for a midfielder in the Premier yeah, League or I something. To, Madison for Spurs, it's for, for Spurs. Yeah, there you yeah, go, for, for Spurs. Spurs. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense. But either way, it's still very impressive. Yeah, yeah, very impressive stats. And it just goes to show how, how important he is to the team. Uh, with those statistics as well yeah but these quotes as well first quote i'm going to read you is regarding harry kane leaving sooner after he arrived and he says i wasn't naive enough to go in there thinking there wasn't a chance harry kane could leave i wasn't going to tottenham for harry kane listen i think he's the best number nine in the world and i would have loved to have played uh, with him um, more than a couple of pre-season games to be honest but this is the challenge now and we've got some brilliant players here at tottenham honestly so um do you read anything from that quote i mean it's just great to see him because a lot of people were saying oh yeah madison wouldn't come here if harry kane was definitely going off and that kind mm. of put those to bed yeah you would have thought because i remember at the time uh we were um obviously battling with newcastle who uh, had a very good season last season and we were thinking you know it's going to be a tough sell to get him away from newcastle and spurs considering what a bit of a shit show we are at the time finishing eighth but we thought you know harry kane would be would have been one of the main pools but it seems though he came in it into the situation with his eyes open i'm sure he talks to harry as well i'm sure it's not a situation where that you know behind closed doors they have conversations about how likely he is to leave and stuff like that so he still came to spurs and maybe but maybe he just saw it as an opportunity to join a big club and be the main man and um i think he would probably he clearly he's relishing that opportunity now we're getting that number 10 shirt and at the moment he's in, i'm not saying he's filling kane's boots but he's just becoming the main man at tottenham the creative hub of the team and i'm sure he's relishing that yeah totally uh the next quote is about him uh talking about Ange postacoglu and he says the way he wants to play suits me perfectly because it's how i see football that's how i want the game to be played and i think if i was the manager uh so i'm fulfilling that as a player he likes players who can take the ball and be brave and bravery is not always just flying into a tackle or shouting at someone bravery is having the ball to take the ball and if you give it away go and take it again. The gaffer wants us to press high and I've been pushing up with um, whoever, whoever's played as the number nine. He says, 
what's the point in not pressing high and sitting off then if they play long you have to run back anyway so it's just the same amount of running that you might have to do and the perfect example is was my goal against Burnley at the weekend yeah so um I th- and, yeah and I and I completely see where he's coming from because the the way someone like Madison likes to play he likes to take the ball on the half turn he likes to look forward he likes to have he needs someone like Madison needs to have options because he can pick, he can ha- have no options but he's still going to be because of his quality he's still going to be able to pick out really difficult passes but then when you add uh, loads of options into that equation it's going to be he's going to be like a kid at a candy store with all the options he's going to be able to create so i'm sure he, he's loving it at the moment and i think the point where he's saying about the high press and stuff is is quite valid because uh, we know under conte every time we lost the ball it's get back in position run back and um and be like solid low low to mid block and and um do that running anyways but I like what he's saying there because he's saying instead of just automatically just doing all that running back, why, might as well see if you can win the ball first yeah. high up the pitch and see if you can cause some problems. And if they beat your press, then you do the running back. So you're going to have to do the running anyway. Yeah. But this this point, you have a chance to try and trouble the opposition and, and cause some problems. So I like that mentality as well. I like what he's I like what he's saying. So yeah, look, I'm I'm, I'm I really enjoy what uh what he's. His, his start to life under Postacoglu. Yeah, and you actually see it so many times, didn't you, so far this season where kind of Spurs have won the ball so high up the pitch and it just creates carnage in the opposition area and the opposition half. So um, absolutely spot on. And last but not least, he talks about playing for Tottenham Hotspur and he says... Um, it's been easy to go there and be myself. It's a brilliant club and the supporters have made me feel so welcome and loved already. I still feel like they've got so much more to see of me. It's quite exciting times for us. It's been a good start and it can get even better. I like the theatre element of almost being a villain that makes me at my best. That's how I enjoy watching football and that's how I enjoy playing it. And uh, he he does play into those narratives, mm. doesn't he? Uh, especially away games where he's always trying to G up the opposition fans and, and provide that bit of shithousery. And it's something I love to see from a player of ours. Yeah, 100%. And clearly he says he gives him that little fire in that little spark in the team. We haven't seen like an aggressive side to him yet or anything like that in terms of like with the opposition, um, like, like sticking, not, not not necessarily sticking up for teammates but like just like that side where he gets in the opposition's faces or anything like that but when it comes to like just playing off with the crowd and stuff we've definitely seen a bit of that it reminds me of like when Deli Ali used to say he used to like play on the edge a bit and and used to like to rile, rile people up and that used to give him a bit of a spark and that's where he was at his best so like we've seen that kind of thing before and I'm just I'm loving Madison at the moment he's really taken to the Spurs fans and I think that that little edge to him makes him even though like in the moment fans might not like it opposition fans i think it does make him more likable overall yeah you want to on the close you want to give us another rendition of the uh, john cooper madison song? <laughs> i'll let john do that i don't have to give him a call i don't know about that all right well that is your tottenham update for today let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding all those interesting quotes that we've talked about today like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you spurs, spurs.